E-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only this is already Forget about it, goodbye Hold on, we just saying hi Five somebody rise up We days Catch us live Somebody let's go Good morning Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in great spirits. Okay. And we need it, we need that as much as we can. Because we got all this craziness, all this negativity, all this ah, all this doom and gloom that we've been covering and talking about. So we need to be coming in here with a smile on our face and getting serious, of course. At the same time, you can still have a serious smile on your face. I don't know what that looks like, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. I don't know what a serious smile looks like. Okay, maybe it's smizing. Maybe maybe it's smizing. Okay. But nonetheless, okay, we are here to talk about all the developments, all the things, all the updates revolving around the diddler. Sorry, I meant Diddy. Whatever he calls himself. Brother Love, Sean, Diddy, Combs, Puff, D- P. Diddy, however many names he's got. We're here to talk about the man. We can't even really say the the myth, the legend anymore, because it sounds like everything's getting unearthed now. And it doesn't look good at all, y'all. It looks really, really bad. Really, 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 really bad. But we also do have somebody very, very special joining us in the top half of the show. And I'm very excited to bring her on in a little bit. We have attorney Simone Redwine back on the show to put in her legal expertise and her two cents, and maybe she'll spill some tea over here as well, revolving around Mr. Diddy, as a lot of people are calling him the diddler out here in these streets, and I'm here for it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm definitely here for it. Hopefully, she will have some time to answer some of you guys' burning questions, so be sure to send those questions out. You can send them through the super chats and all that stuff that would be greatly greatly appreciated i'll make sure i keep an eye out for those things because i know a lot of us have questions especially revolving around this raid and what can transpire from that raid again let me ask you guys the question i have is or one of the many is was that all for show was it just to get his butthole puckered up or was this the real deal holy field what is coming up soon for Diddy. We got to talk about that. But before we get everything going, please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. All right. That would really, really mean a lot. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you hit that reaction button. Okay. Follow me on all my platforms, please. And thank you. YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that follow button on Facebook. Hit that follow button on X. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. The Pascal Show, one word. Please. If you're on YouTube and you want to support the channel and you appreciate how I tell these stories for your day, please do me a favor. Hit that join button down below. Become a member of the family. Or if you want to support even more, go over to patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. And of course, check out my merch page, pascalmerch.com. Okay, guys, got all that mucky muck out the way. And I appreciate all y'all for being here. Really is a blessing. You guys are dope as hell, as always. You already know how fine and wonderful you are. I appreciate y'all, okay? Just jump back and kiss yourself 17 times, okay, real quick for me. But before we get into everything, Diddy, wow, his home was raided. Two of his homes, not just one, but two, on two opposite sides of the country. One in L.A., one in Miami. It is absolutely insane, guys. My mind is absolutely blown over this situation. I'm also very excited to see justice coming. If justice is going to be served, that's the question that we are all wanting to know. This is the reason why we're bringing on our friend, our good friend, Simone Redwine, to the show in just a second. But first, I got to show you guys, of course, just a quick trip down memory lane on Simone. She did a podcast a little bit ago. She had some things to say that actually went viral. It was shared like crazy. Let's take a look at that video. Just a quick trip down memory lane. She dropped some serious knowledge and serious bombs on this video right here. 
about Diddy and about Cassie's lawsuit and why that lawsuit was settled so damn quickly. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Her attorneys were really brilliant. They didn't sue just Diddy. They sued his corporation. They sure did. And they sued his corporations and sued as her, in her capacity as an employee. When you do that, it triggers commercial liability insurance. Yeah. And it triggers another policy called directors and officers. Okay. And we know he's a director Correct. of these companies as the CEO. So now you've got two policies. What happens then is it takes away Puffy's ability to settle. It's not his choice no more. So it's no longer personal accountability. It's yep. his organization. It's his organization. And it's no different than like if you hit somebody with your car. Mm -hmm. it, it, let's say you have State Farm. Mm -hmm. State Farm gets to decide to settle, not you. You could say, I didn't run the stop sign. That's not true. They're lying. If mm -hmm. State Farm says, we don't care. We did our investigation. We're settling. That's it. That's what happened here. So because they add they added those claims, the corporate insurance carrier got to say, read over and say, oh, hell no, we're giving her the money. We're hearing you. Just a quick trip down memory lane. Simone Redwine dropped some serious knowledge bombs on that podcast. It went viral. This thing was getting shared all over the place, okay? It's been insane. And we brought on the show last time when we were talking about Diddy and all the things that were transpiring, transpiring around Diddy. Now this raid has happened, and of course we had to bring our good friend back to the show. So please welcome the host of Girl, Is That Legal? Attorney <laughs> Simone Redwine. Hello, hello. hello. Thank you How for you having doing? me back. Thank you, thank you. Of course, So much of course. has taken place since then. Have mercy. Let me just say, <laughs> it's been absolutely insane. Um, and of course, uh, I was out of town when it happened uh, on Monday, but my jaw dropped so hard. And I was like, man, I wish I could be watching play by play, moment by moment, you know, uh, uh, of what's been going, what was going on on both coasts in these in these homes. I have so many questions. I know my fam has a lot of questions in the family chat. We're going to get let's to those in a little bit. But let's okay. talk about a few things. Actually, before we go into that, I do want to share um, this video that you just recently uh, posted on your own Instagram. And, of course, <laughs> guys, go check out her Instagram. Of course, go check out her YouTube channel. We will talk about her YouTube channel or your YouTube channel in just a little bit. But I do want to share this video that's been shared like crazy all over again. And it's her talking about, it's you talking about this raid. Let's take a look. Oh y'all, Diddy's LA and Miami residences were raided by the feds. What this means is that they were able to obtain a search warrant from a federal judge. In order to get a search warrant, that means you have to have probable cause. So that means the feds presented to the judge evidence sufficient enough for the judge to believe there's probable cause that crimes have occurred inside of Diddy's LA or Miami home or both. Or there's evidence that would be used to support proof of crime. So basically, it's likely that a federal indictment against Diddy could be coming any day now. Stay tuned. Follow Attorney Simone Redwine on Instagram. Okay. And of course, you know, is that the girl, is that legal? Okay. Yes. Now, now I have so many questions, okay? Um, so yeah. obviously, all right, the raid happened. I'm going to say this first. At first, because of course, the streets are talking. Of course, there are people on the on both sides. the The room is split right now. Some people right. are sitting here saying, "Leave Diddy alone, let him do his thing." Then there's the other side that is like, "Yo, he's going down." Right? Yeah. So yeah. When it comes to this raid, because some people think that this was all for show, that it was just for theater to just get him worried, get him scared, etc. I'm wondering, was this all for show? Or feds not. Don't what are your do thoughts? That. The feds don't do for show. Okay. That's not how they work. A state, uh, state judge or, or, or uh, not a state judge, but a state prosecutor might do that because state prosecutors, remember, are elected. Federal U.S. attorneys are not elected and federal judges are lifetime appointments. Okay. So ain't no for show when it comes to the feds. And when I say feds, that is all encompassing. It also includes Homeland Security, who is 
who executed the raid. And that is mm -hmm. because Homeland Security is the entity that oversees sex trafficking allegations and uh, claims. So was there anything, what was it that inspired them to actually go to a federal judge, get this stuff signed off? Was it just from Cassie's lawsuit alone? No. So um, CNN has reported that four persons went and had interviews with federal authorities and that those four persons were one male, three female. That is consistent with the civil complaints currently pending against Diddy. The male is likely Rodney Jones, who has the civil complaint alleging that Diddy was funneling his booty hole and other things, right? The females, the three females were likely Cassie, Jane Doe, who was the 11th grader who says that she was trafficked from Detroit to Diddy Studios on his private plane, um, as well as the third female who, uh, there was a female that claimed that both Diddy and Aaron Hall uh, assaulted her. So more than likely it was their statements combined because each and every one of them in their complaints used the term sex trafficking. Interesting. So it is from other people that have stepped forward that have put out their own allegations and lawsuits. Th these are not just from new unknown people, other Jane and John Doe's. It could Unlikely. very well be. Okay, so it could Correct. very well be from Little Rod and the three other women that have stepped forward and spoken out. Um, right, because what happens with the feds is they start yeah. with the evidence already in their system. Those lawsuits are federal civil lawsuits. So all the feds had to do was download that bad boy from the computer, just like the rest of us could, right? Look over it and then give their attorneys a call and say, hey, we'd like to have your client in. I've sued, um, I've sued an entity based on, it was a civil case, but it was based on uh, FDA clear device, right? And what mm -hmm. I did as a civil lawyer, I wrote my complaint, I did all my thing, and then I went to the FDA entity, I went to the FDA and I said, hey, this company is making a deadly product. And the feds were like, wait, what? They looked over it, did their investigation. Again, this is civil. They did their investigation and six months later, they shut the whole company down. I bankrupted that company. All by taking the wow. evidence I had in my civil case, giving it to the feds, the federal mm -hmm. authority, letting them do their own investigation. I believe it is the same thing here. Civil complaint did its own investigation, right? We know Rodney Jones has a lot of receipts. Right. That attorney, Cassie's attorney, the other attorneys, handed over those receipts. Now we know the government don't like doing work, right? Everybody who's ever been to a government office, if you ever needed a food stamp, if you ever need anything from the government, the best way to get it done is you gotta do the work for them. Right. So by the civil lawyers handing them over all of the evidence that they have, one, it still stays private, with the feds during that investigation, but it makes it so much easier for them to then bring criminal, uh, com criminal allegations and criminal charges. Interesting. I, I, okay, so I appreciate you breaking that all the way down. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And for those of y'all in the nosebleed seats, hopefully she just answered it. She broke it down, okay? Now, when it comes to this raid, let's talk about this raid. Let's yes. talk about it. Okay. Let's let's talk about it for a second. What what were they, what were they looking for? Because you even said in yeah. your Instagram video that they obviously had the in, the incentive to go in there for something specific, at least something, yeah. right? They didn't just yes. go in there to just go. Oh, I love what he did with the drapes. No, he right. went, they yeah. went in there for a reason. So, what do you think the reason is? What were do you think they came? Well. What do you think they we went know. in there for? And do you do we know if they came out with anything? There it is. Uh, uh, yes, we know they came out with things. And because we saw boxes and boxes. In addition, we know that what they are looking for is evidence to support a sex trafficking charge. We know this because if there is no sex trafficking allegations, Homeland Security wouldn't even be involved. Okay? The other thing that we know is that CNN has reported that prior to Diddy boarding the plane, boarding his plane on Monday, mm -hmm. he handed over via his attorneys multiple cell phones that were requested by the government. Wait, I'm okay? sorry. Time out. Yes. Time out. 
Time oh, you didn't know? Can I, can I, I process that? Spilling tea. Yeah, you spilling Legal some tea. Th- at least for I'll me. Give you a moment. At least for me. Take let me just, can I, can I just breathe this in for a second? Let it, let it like it soak in. down to the plums real quick. Okay. Y'all so got you to sp- come up. Yeah. Y'all got to come at night. Come on over to Girl Is That Legal in the evenings. We going we gonna get you right. Okay. So he, he himself, Diddy, yes. handed over cell phones, multiple cell phones to 5 Correct? Correct. Correct. Hold, so on the day of the raid. On the day of the raid, that's when he handed or those at things least before over. Then. It was it was prior wow. to him boarding his flight. So I don't know if it was that morning or the prior day. But what that means is he hmm. knew something was coming, right? What happens is they don't call Diddy on the phone. They call his attorney. Hmm. So it's US attorney um, and those investigators picking up investigators calling and picking up the phone and speaking attorney to attorney. You never speak to a client. That's unlawful to do that. And anybody who knows Diddy knows he got a gang of lawyers, right? So you call the lawyer, you say, hey, uh, we just got a search warrant. It's gonna be executed soon. Do not destroy anything. And more specifically, we're calling you right now because we're coming for the cell phone. We need his cell phone today, right now. So so they gave him a heads up. There's a, or, or, okay, sorry. It, is Absolutely. it f- confirmed that he was given a heads up or did he just get a tip? CNN, Pun not confirmed, intended. CNN confirmed that he had to hand over his cell phones in advance. The only way that that can be done is if you have a tip. Secondly, as an attorney who has practiced federal law, federal mm. criminal law, I can say that they always notify the attorney in advance that something like a, a, a search warrant, a raid, et cetera, is coming. Now, they do not tell you the day. They do not tell you the time. But what they will say is, they, it's like they give you an option. You can bring these things here today, right. or we're going to come and get them tomorrow kind of thing. I say tomorrow, exaggeration. Loosely, yeah. They, they, and the reason that they do that is to keep everybody safe, right? If they just come busting in your house without you knowing it's coming, you have every right to defend yourself so you can blaze them up, right? Especially, True. and when you have a fortress and a compound like Diddy has, he's got Buku security. So it is safer for all parties involved that they call your lawyer and tell your lawyer, hey, this is the deal, so that there can be a safe exchange with you know minimal casualties, minimal issues. Right. Wow. 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 Uh, I, I got to do this, guys. I'm sorry. That that's a, that's a big deal. OK, no. And that's very it, that's good to know, because let's be real. Um, and This is kind of venturing off topic a, a tiny bit off of this this part of the, the topic. But given the fact that he was going on a plane, he was planning on leaving the country. He was planning on hopping on a plane and leaving and then suddenly he got grounded left but he wasn't on that plane so that is very interesting now i can see why he was leaving if he had the tip ahead right. of time he if said, he knew i don't want to be there i don't want no photos of me in handcuffs i don't want to be there when it happens right. also keep in mind remember with donald trump when mira largo was raided by the feds his lawyer too got an advance call and we know that as well because um, Trump tried to say, oh, they came in the middle of the night and we had no idea and da, 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 such that the feds actually, the, the press um, that represents the feds, the press secretary said, oh, no, they were aware. We coordinated it with his attorneys. We informed his attorneys in advance, more specifically is what they said. So I say that to say as another example of how it is standard. But then that begs the question, why in the heck? Did this man allow his sons to be there when this was executed? Why weren't your children with you? That's what I'd like to know as well. Why did he kick rocks the way that he did, leaving his legacy behind? He left his own flesh and blood behind to be detained, to be handcuffed, put outside on display in front of all the news and all that. I'm still wondering why why he did that. You see what I'm saying? It's like, okay, so he's Correct. only he's only more concerned about saving his own butt than actually taking and protecting his own kids. Those kids don't have to experience something like that if they're not involved. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. 
so right. it, it's mind blowing to me. Go ahead. And Simone. yeah, and it sounds like this is exactly what Misa Hilton was complaining about months ago. Right. When, um, there was an incident where Justin Combs was, you know, he had the drunk driving situation when he was with his father. There should be no excuse for drunk driving. Now, we also, I am a firm believer in also holding grown children accountable for their decisions. How, because you shouldn't be driving when you're with your daddy. There should be multiple drivers at hand. Nobody should be drunk driving, period, point blank, poo. Mm -hmm. um, but I just referenced that to say she's been sick sick of this interaction and note in the amended complaint justin is lit justin combs misa's son is listed as a defendant interestingly christian is not christian is also listed as participating with underage girls and drugs and sex but christian isn't listed as a defendant and it makes me wonder if perhaps a part of rodney jones's attorney strategy mm -hmm. is List the one whose mama is sick of this and perhaps be able to use him to flip. I'm not sure. Mm, okay. I'm not sure. Because we already had one flipper this week. So we could talk about that when you're ready. Yeah. We already had one defendant released, which was Ethiopia. Um, she was the executive with Motown. She yep. was released in exchange for signing an affidavit. And the gist of her affidavit was she basically explained the way money changed hands between United Music Group, Motown, and Diddy's label. So she just talked about how the money flowed throughout Correct. these because companies. Correct, in order, yes, because in order to keep those entities in the case, it has to be clear that there's a money exchange and that it's mm -mm. clear as to the way in which they're each involved. So effectively, what she was able, what she said per the affidavit, it explained the way the corporations could be involved financially. Mm -hmm. And then it it basically said she herself as an individual um, should not be included because she didn't have personal liability, so to speak. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, she got taken off of that list of people. Correct. Um, so she by signing her signing that affidavit, that's her basically saying, like, all right, I'm willing to participate or cooperate at, at least to whatever you guys end up asking me. And uh, I'm not gonna hide anything. I just don't want to be on this list anymore. And uh mm -hmm. I don't want to be put I don't want to be here. a defendant. Yeah, I want to mm -hmm. okay. Um, and that's it's important to clarify that interesting. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Her being removed from a civil suit. Mm -hmm. got nothing to do with potential federal charges. Of course not. That is totally different because the feds, if they if they feel differently, can say, <laughs> oh, well, no, you wrote a check from here yeah. to here knowing it was going to be used for sex workers or this, that, or the third. Right. So, yeah, just because you get out in the civil does not mean you're out and uh, can avoid criminal charge. That's no, and that's absolutely true. It's not like she said is said, hey, let me work out a deal with y'all. Okay. Correct. I don't want to get hit with any charges or anything. Nah. She's right. just getting off that list. But if they do find something like, oh no, Ethiopian most definitely had her hands in this thing and she knew all this stuff was going down. Yeah, she could still catch a whole she could get slapped with serious charges, just like everybody <laughs> else on that like list as else. well. And we're going to yes, talk sir. about the list here in a in a little bit as well here in a second, but let me ask you this, you know, just get straight to the point, right? What do you think Diddy is looking at here as far as charges? Is he going to be uh, hit with a litany? Trafficking. Okay. Uh, yeah, it hit with a litany. Okay, I'll answer that one first. Yes. The feds overcharge. That is always what they do. They charge you with more things to scare you into uh, potentially um, taking a plea. And then they can always scale back a charge later. But if you don't make a charge in the beginning, the closer it gets to trial, the less likely a judge will let you add that charge, right? Because people, uh, your teams have been planning for trial, planning your trial strategy based on the allegation. Important as well, just one charge of sex trafficking could result in a 10 year sentence. It's like because the feds have mandatory minimums. And if, uh, uh, yes, one sex trafficking charge has a minimum, minimum federal term of 10 years. 
And so if he's looking at three or four, there you go. And they can run concurrently, which means together, or be stacked on top of each other. Doesn't matter. He'll be in, in jail for the rest of his natural life. Let's keep it a buck if he is actually charged with these things. Let's be real, okay? Oh, we gonna a say? second charge. Go Sorry. ahead. Sex no, trafficking okay. within the other one. Remember, there's RICO. RICO has been used throughout this. If it's a RICO charge, RICO is so dangerous because what that means is the least of you can be charged the same as the head honcha. So if the least is... Daphne Joy or Young Miami, who were just sex workers committing a little wire fraud per the complaint, mm -hmm. they get charged with the 10 year minimum, just like Diddy. Woo! Woo! Okay. If there's a Rico, if it's a Rico, <laughs> let me tell you, Miss, Miss Simone <laughs> coming through with the fire, okay, with the knowledge. All right. So if you appreciate the conversation, please do me a favor, okay? Hit that like button down below. Crush that like button down below. Hit that reaction button. Don't forget to follow, hit that subscribe button, etc. Yes. That would be greatly appreciated. Okay. And of course, please go check out Girl Is That Legal. We're not done Thank yet. Thank you. Okay, we are nowhere done. Nowhere near done, but I do have a question from one of our members. I do appreciate your, your support for the last two months. It says, one of his sons is mentioned in the Jones case. Uh, what could that mean with what's going on with Diddy? Good question. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, actually, both sons were mentioned. Only one son, uh, both sons, as in Christian and Justin, are both mentioned, but only Justin has been sued as a defendant. So what me, what that means is Justin has to get his own lawyer. Justin cannot use the same lawyer as daddy because hmm. there is a conflict of interest there. So How? dad's got to pay for each of them. How? Uh, because oh. there can come a time when you got to tell on daddy to get a deal for you. That's why Whenever you, you see on TV, like a big murder charge, right? Yeah. And it's two co-defendants. They actually each have their own. They're going to sit next to each other, but they each have their own lawyers because mm. of that conflict. Because Justin could also get immunity. He could be given an immunity that says, hey, here's immunity if you tell me everything you can about your father, right? So for right. that reason, the same lawyer can't negotiate that deal. Because that means there are certain private things that Justin has to say that Diddy does not need to know and that Diddy does not have uh, the right to know, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Let me get this super chat really quick because I got a, so many questions. So, Phil, thank you so much for the five. Simone, one question for one alum to another. Will you be watching Cornell in the uh, NAA, <laughs> NCAA uh, men's hockey tournament at 530 today? Oh, you a hockey fan? I love it. I am probably going to be at a happy hour real estate event here in Dallas tonight. So I'm probably going to miss that. But if it's on at the bar, I'm going to give it a look. Okay. Let's go Big Red. I'm okay. a and, it, and it's important that I, I do have to mention that because um, my page is silly. I give my legal breakdowns. Um, if you go to my Instagram, actually today I share a story about how I used to date one of Diddy's sex workers. And yeah. I... Yeah. I actually, I do have that video, uh, and I, I am going to share that in a little bit, and we are going to talk about that. We are going to circle Please back do. to that video, uh, trust Please and do. believe. But let's get back into this conversation. Interesting yeah, to know yeah. that you're interesting to know that you're a hockey fan. I didn't know you were a hockey fan. Well, you know, I love I love everything Cornell. They were good to me. That's where I went. That's I was a full ride for court to Cornell Law. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. And I appreciate the super chat. Okay, um, but. Back into Diddy, really, really quick. Okay, yeah. now when it comes to this, okay, I, you, you you're saying that he will be hit. Or you believe he will be hit with a litany of charges. Um, everything started yeah. from the you know ST to everything else, right? Now, oh, yes. Now oh, I'm curious. Yes, and we talked okay. about the wire fraud. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Yes, that's what. Oh, when exactly I said the second big go. one is wire fraud. Wire fraud is such an easy one because the gist of wire fraud is that it could be as simple as you cash apping somebody for something that needs to be disclosed on their taxes. So for example, here, the complaint alleges that Diddy, and we all know Diddy gives his girls allowances, period, poo. Those pretty girls aren't doing it for free. They don't do it for the love of Diddy. So he gives each of them allowances. 
Um, and pursuant to the complaint, uh, they call them sex workers simply because they're getting paid to have sex with Diddy, right? They wouldn't be having sex with Diddy if he wasn't giving them money. Other people simply call it a relationship with a rich guy, right? Right. Um, but so it's it's creative wordsmanship. But here's how the feds can use it to their advantage. Mm. Under federal law, if you receive more than, I believe it's $12,500 from anybody, you're supposed to claim that on your taxes and pay taxes on it. Young Miami has said, I've heard her say that, that Diddy gives her allowance of at least 100,000. I saw some reports somewhere else where it was more like 500,000, whatever the number is. She, as well as I think he bought her a car and he's done a variety of things. She posts these pictures online. Listen, if she has not claimed that as income on her taxes, as though it is a job, like screwing him a job, She's going to be in trouble for wire fraud and IRS tax fraud. And most women I know, most beautiful women I know who receive money like that from their boyfriends, I've never known of anybody to file it on their taxes. Mm. So I anticipate for Daphne Joy, who is 50 Cent's baby mama, as well as for Young Miami, that could be one area where they get ensnared into this. And that is used, those kind of claims would be used to get them to flip and tell more right. or where they could be dangling and looking at some time simply for that tax evasion. I mean, $100,000 a month times 12, that's $1.2 million, baby boo. And the feds, once you, I mean, they, they were jacking people up for years for PPP fraud and that was like 300,000. So if you didn't pay taxes on 1.2 million, <laughs> you were prostituting and hooking you still, even drug dealers are supposed to pay taxes on the drugs they sell. That is literally a law. And it's wow. one of the ways that they stack charges on drug dealers. So we're in for a ride, y'all. Wow. Wow. Okay, real real quick before we continue on. Do you really think they have something that's going to stick to Diddy? Or could, could he be like Teflon? Like this stuff's just going to slide right off. What are no. your thoughts? Nothing slides off the feds. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. And embarrassment is, they are so big on not being embarrassed. And it also is mm -mm. like the New York, uh, the Manhattan district has such a great record. I want to say it's like 98%, 97, it's between 97 and 99% conviction rate. It's, it's absurd because what they do is, like I said, they stack so many charges that one of them is bound to stick. And then when you've got someone who's been committing or allegedly committing offenses for the last 20 years, something is going to stick in this time frame. Yeah. So I am wondering about the other names that have been mentioned in all these in all these documents, all these lawsuits, et cetera, everything from Prince Harry all the way down to. Cuba Gooding Jr. and the like. Could other celebrities get hit in the wake of these charges on Diddy? Um, yeah, as long as the complaints are getting amended, uh, new allegations can be added. So an amendment of a complaint is basically where you say, oh, your honor, let me clarify or change something here. So here, the complaint was amended on the 21st, 25th, which I believe was Monday. Um, the complaint was amended to remove the Motown executive, Ethiopia, as well as to clarify some of the facts and the allegations and the charges. So, for example, one of them was it was more specific regarding Justin Combs and his criminal activities, uh, participation with sex workers, drugs, underage girls. That's an example. So as long as those things are happening where it's been changing, it, it, it also included, um, you know, it was more specific with the allegations with Cuba Gooding Jr. as well. More people can be in now. I also, though, I want to clarify about Prince Harry. I don't like some of the ways in which the, the complaint was written because it, it was really giving clout chasing in some of the areas. The area that referenced Prince Harry, it included photos of Prince Harry and Diddy. That was not at Diddy's house. That was at some other event. Those photos were simply used to say, these two are these two have a social relationship, as in Diddy and Prince Harry. 
Mm-hmm. So I say to people, be careful. That's why when people are like, oh, there's so many receipts. Yes, they're receipts, but the receipts are not relevant and they are not being interpreted in context. And context matters. Mm. Okay. And that, I agree. I do agree with that. I, I've said it a billion times. Like a picture's worth or a video is worth a thousand words or whatever. But at the same time, if you don't know the context, it can be placed in the wrong place. It can be manipulated or moved around and say, oh, this happened on the same day that, you know, a crime was committed and say that it didn't say that it was a completely innocent day. Um, and that's, I, I think, really important as well about you know, uh-huh. when it comes to stuff like that. I do have another super chat here. Let me grab this too real quick before we move on. Amanda, thank you so much for the five. Uh, how far back would the investigation go back? Uh, there, There is a woman uh, claiming to be something what he oh claiming she oh yeah that he aimed at her in the face uh during the in the club um which we are going to be watching later on in the show guys we we do have that interview from news nation um the woman that got actually shot in the face we are going to be talking about that uh yeah Yeah. i'm actually curious about what could possibly happen there and if he could get charged for those things now too sorry ma'am um too bad so sad Dang, really, really? It, it, yeah, the statute of limitations, right? So wow. basically, okay. the only offenses that have a statute of limitations uh, that doesn't toll is pretty much murder, any type of homicide, murder, you know? Because uh, that's why you have cold cases that took 30 years to solve. And then there are some states where if it was an S assault and the victim was a minor, then there's very long statutes of limitations. Aside from that, this happened 20 years ago. For most felonies, it is a five-year statute of limitation. Mm. So that's why I said it's unfortunate, but there's nothing to reopen because even if it's reopened, no one can be charged. So, there's no civil. There are no, no civil. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was yeah, just because say, on the civil side. Still, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Gonna, on the civil side, we do have something called the discovery rule, mm-hmm. which means Let's say the statute of limitations, uh, which is which it is for most injuries, is two years. But maybe you didn't discover uh, something about it later. Then it could run two years from the discovery. Even that doesn't apply here because she said right there, she looked Diddy in the eyes and knew it was Diddy. The truth is, sorry, baby girl, you should have sued Diddy civilly way back then. And there is no reason. There was nothing preventing you from doing that. So if I were to interview her, my question would be, did you try to sue him civilly or did you do so perhaps? And did you get a private settlement? Because if, if it wasn't filed in public court documents, they could have easily settled privately and we would not have known. But there right. was nothing to prevent her from going to a civil attorney like myself who would take it on a contingency fee, just like Cassie's lawyers did. And those lawyers would get a percent and she would get the rest. Right. What's interesting, though, just so you guys know, she did do a TikTok video um, right around when the Little Rod video or when the Little Rod, Little Rod uh, lawsuit came out. She did talk okay. about how she did sue and that she did get money. She talked about how she was. Yeah, she did get money. She did say that Good. she got money. But apparently she is. But apparently she is still out here. I guess so. Uh, she she's just trying to scream from the roof to- rooftops. And I do understand right. her doing what she needs to do to get her own version no of justice there. and and putting mm-hmm. this information out here. Because obviously, when Little Rod put that in the lawsuit, um, talking about that whole thing, I mean that kind of you know confirms a few things for herself. Being like, "Yo, I'm not crazy. What I saw, right. what he did to me, is what he did to me. It wasn't." uh shine it was diddy who did this you know um Mm -hmm. so that is very interesting but you're right uh too little too late kind of thing but she Uh did get millions so not really too little too late she got money gotcha okay as i think about it though um there is one way that she could potentially get justice even though the criminal statute of limitations has passed which would be this all right so if he's charged with the other thing the rico sex trafficking anything charged with anything right if he gets found guilty first there's the guilt or innocence phase secondly you have the penalty phase during the penalty phase 
any of your victims from anything, even things unrelated to what you've been found guilty for, mm -hmm. they're able to take the stand and tell the judge, hey, judge, let me tell you what a menace to society this man is over here, right? And then the judge can take into consideration all the prior bad acts. So that's where she could take the stand and say, take the stand and say, you know what, your honor? He set up shine. That's who really shot me. Take that in consideration and throw the book at him. And what happens is you'll see sometimes if you watch Dateline or other things, they can't get you. They may not be able to get him for shooting her in the face, but they could give him the same kind of sentence that he would have gotten for shooting her mm. in the face for the S trafficking or the wire fraud or anything else that they could get him in this case. So literally they could stack up all the, the, the guy he hung over the, um, hung over the balcony, balcony. right? In Cassie's yeah. suit. Uh, allegedly, which was allegedly Wale. Kid Cuddy. We blew up Kid Cuddy's car. Kid Cuddy could come up there and say, your honor, he blew my car up and did nothing happen to him. Get that mofo. Literally, all of those people could be lined up. And that could be how Diddy could go up underneath the jail and not come back out. Yeah, he, oh, uh, yeah. It, this, he ain't, whoo. With all this, he's not going to even have time to come back up for air. Let's be real. Right. But let's talk about yeah. white boy Rick. I mean, his friend. <laughs> Can we talk about white boy Rick real quick? Okay. So we got to talk he about it. Don't he look like he's stinky? Say again, what? Yeah, he looks stinky. I say he, he looks so stinky. He looks, he looks like he stinks. <laughs> he looks grimy. All right. He looks a little bit grimy. But. Yeah, like he don't wash his hands ever. But he looks like. But what, what I think is pretty wild. I mean, just a little side note. I think it is pretty. I feel that Diddy did a, a brilliant move on his part because this guy looks like does not look like the type that would be hanging around uh, with hip hop artists uh, and holding. Let's not forget holding these these type of party favors and whatnot. Right. He, mm -hmm. You know, he, he is kind of like a wallflower. And I think that that's really on Diddy's part. Uh, uh, pretty smart. Uh, it's just that he just got caught. Right. But the, what's interesting is. They were about to leave. They were getting on a plane, leaving to go to uh, Antigua, if I'm correct. And that's when he they got his mule, okay, mm -hmm. uh, holding some things. Some things were, you know, chemical-laced uh, candy, which is weird. Could It could be edibles, like, you know, THC edibles, but then also the cocaina. OK, that says a right. lot to me. Right now, I'm curious mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, white boy Rick. I call him white boy Rick. OK, Kay. I'm curious about this. Is this going to be bad news bears for Diddy in the long run? Hell yes. Mm. Because those are the first people that the feds get to flip. He is at the bottom of the totem pole. Yep. And look at him. He's not going to do well in prison and he knows yeah, it. Let's just that little boy is look. terrified. Yeah, look at him. He looked like he's just crying his eyes out in the back of that little police vehicle. He looked like they didn't tell him through the, you know, through the little jail waiting room. And everybody was like barking at him like, whoop, whoop, you know, and he was just like, oh, fresh that fish. Is fresh fish. That is exactly what he's given. Yeah. Those make the best people to flip and tell it all. So it's it's bad news for him. Because that is the exact kind of person that gets immunity in exchange for singing like a canary. Because the truth is, that's not the only person, I'm sure, that white boy Rick totes drugs for, right? Mm -hmm. White boy Rick probably totes for a lot of people. So they probably got white, going to have white boy Rick in there humming, baby. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. And, and again, he's going to have to get his own lawyer. Now, I bet I would anticipate that. Uh, Diddy would probably offer to pay for that lawyer so that he feels like he has a sense of loyalty to Diddy and like feel like, oh, Diddy's got me. Diddy's going to protect me. But I mean, we saw how that worked for Michael Cohen when it came to Donald Trump. Michael Cohen ended up going to prison, True. etc. So I think there are enough examples where that little boy's going to be terrified. I anticipate he'd be one of the first to flip. I mean, you know, and, and it's crazy because, you know, the, it's so weird. Because he looks like the type who listens to like chain smokers and 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 Taylor Swift. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he yeah. does not look like somebody who's out here knowing every single lyric to every Diddy song. You know what I'm saying? It's it's so odd to me, but also at the same time, I keep thinking that this is a very smart move, okay? Because he can 
hide in plain sight with this white boy Rick. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Oh yeah, he, he don't have nothing. He's Look so at this dude. clever. Yeah, you, never you know? have it on his person. Oh Always hell no. Always have it on a peon. And I'm, I'm so curious. I wonder what is the salary for this kind of a task? I like, like what? Know. But does he pay yeah, him in ladies? Does he pay him in women? You know what I mean? Does he I'm pay sure. him in just clout? And you know like what I'm saying? Otherwise, he probably couldn't get one. But oh, oh. A free one probably <laughs> wouldn't even want him. <laughs> yeah. It's my guess. <laughs> No doubt. No doubt. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, baby, hold me closer to the whatever that song is. Chain smoker stuff. He ain't he ain't he ain't at a hip hop hip hop club. You know what I mean? Yeah. He ain't out there. He out there. And you know? he looks stinky. He looks stinky. <laughs> I don't like these people looking done. Stinky. You know what I mean? It's a love stinky. story, baby. Just say yes. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't give me the vibe of being out here. And I, I know plenty, plenty, plenty white boy Rick kind of guys out here, okay, that definitely, yeah, he out in the club. Okay, he out there. All right. But him, I thought he was his accountant for a second there. You know what I mean? No disrespect. Jeez. But damn. Okay. Yeah. But very interesting. I'm very, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here. Obviously, this story keeps on going and going and going and going, and and this oh case keeps getting thicker mm -hmm. than a snicker. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, I've I said it in the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I am most definitely here for it. Okay, but there <laughs> is something, and I'm, sh and I know for a fact Simone is here for it too. But there is something else that you did say on another show, um, okay. just last night, if I'm correct. And I wanted to share it here, if that's okay, because I find it to okay. be very okay. interesting. So, and you did mention it just a little bit ago, so I need to bring it up, okay? But you did mention something about one of your boyfriends or a guy that you were seeing at that time uh, being invited to one of Diddy's freak-offs and actually participating mm -hmm. in one of these. Yeah. We got to take a look at this video. This is absolutely yeah, nothing futz in my personal opinion. We got to take a look at this. Let's hear what she got to say uh, from this other show here. What is the name of the show really quick? Yes, it's the Al Reynolds Show. Al I also Reynolds Show. Yeah, the Al Reynolds Show. You go to Al Reynolds' uh, YouTube page, or you could yes. also watch it from Girl Is That Legal. Yes. We do it weeknight, um, Monday through Friday. There yes. it is. So let's take a look at this video real quick. I heard to add to that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, and I would also say when I heard Teray's story, I believed it up front. I heard Me a too. piece of Tanika's story. I believed it up front. Yep. Because I dated a man who used to be one of Diddy's sex workers. Let me tell you about this man. He was so fine. I he was gay sometimes. <laughs> I pretended not to notice. He was gay. Yeah. Wow. He was so gorgeous. Wow. Okay. I'm not gonna say he was. He was fun because it might be a giveaway to people who know me and who knew. But he he exemplified. Did you say African the, country? <laughs> yeah, it's a continent, boo boo. I know. I was a national man. <laughs> so you know, I'm, I'm gonna say where he's from, but he exemplified BBC. You know, being black, <laughs> right? Gorgeous, just shiny and shimmery, and all of a sudden. And I remember him telling me this was in like 2012. He was like, I was. He was a model and everything in New York and stuff. That's when I was like, oh, I, I went through my African phase, right? I only like African men who are good at math and science because you know I didn't want to struggle. <laughs> and he was I'm trying he to get an engineer, huh? Every, <laughs> above. I was like, oh, because y'all don't, they don't never miss, honey. They don't ever miss. And he also happened to be a model, and, I, and he had this amazing bone structure. And anyone who knows me knows I like new with gray bone structure, right? That way, if you get that, you'll be just like, just like Teddy Ray. <laughs> I'm done. I digress. Like, like attorney Brian Jones. I'm done. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm done. If, if he's married, forgive me. If he's unmarried, well, you know, it doesn't count. Um, I'm sorry, my bone structure. Isn't there. I'll work on it, though. Hold on real quick. Do you miss this guy? It just feels like you miss him, you know? I'm just curious. Do you miss him or no? No, because he's gay sometimes. I'm somebody who's gay none of the time. None of the time. Just me. Just want me and my buttercup. Just time out. Stop. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Yeah, <laughs> great bone structure, though. 
wasn't enough. I uh, had to eat with a butthole. For, from time to time, he was batting for the other team, but he had great bone structure, though. Uh, I can't compete with what a man can provide you. I don't even have a feeder. <sighs> I know. <laughs> Let's but I promise I'm getting to the point. I promise I'm getting to I the point. I know you're getting to it, but damn, you missed this dude. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Let's continue. Let's continue. No, you're, you're married. married. You're off limits. <laughs> yeah, nobody can. You're, you're just getting me. I can give you a hug. You can cuddle. You're my friend, but I can't do it to you. Anyway, that's my, my gay boyfriend. He used to participate in day in Diddy's activities, or he said he only went to one. And I remember having him describe it, and he told me that it was in it was in New York. It was in the, uh, out, the outskirts, like a little bit upstate, like or wherever. He said he walked in. Um, I think he told me that they had on like masks and things like that, so that wow. you wouldn't immediately know what was what. But he said it was too much. He claimed he only did it one time because I mean I think he knew it. He told me like yeah. I fondled Diddy's butthole every Thursday. Oh. So I wouldn't, you know, give him multiple dates. But I'm just saying, as an example, I have heard these stories for over a decade. So now that this came out, and literally what he told me tracked Cassie's complaint, Ooh. I was like, oh, I think there's some there there. I think there's something here. All right. So, you know, what's interesting is, uh, first off, I, I, I got to ask you, why did you say this before? Why did you wait till now, Mang? I literally have. I've done it on podcasts and stuff, and we discussed it there. I have literally, because when it happened, I was like, oh, my God. Did you try that? Yeah, I was shocked. I called everybody I knew who knew my gay boyfriend and I. I was like, oh, my God. That was what my gay boyfriend was talking about. So, I'm yeah, done. y'all, and when you come to my page, you're going to get the law, but you're going to get my foolishness because they are one and the same. That's why I had to go to an Ivy League school because I'm silly, and I was like, people are not going to take me seriously if I don't have a real education. They're going to be like, <laughs> what clown college does this chick go to? Mm. I'm and an idiot savant. And, and, and she's an attorney, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so not really only will like, she drop yeah. knowledge, legal knowledge for you, but she will really make you laugh. OK, uh, she's <laughs> this woman's hilarious. OK, first off, uh, Miss Simone, I appreciate you coming on to the show. It really Thank does you. mean a lot. It's never a dull moment when you come on to the show. Um, please let everybody know where they can go find you uh, and check out your, your YouTube channel. I'm going to give you the, the floor for a second so you can just promote yo ish. Let's go. Thank you, guys. All right. So I'm attorney Simone Redwine. You can reach me at SimoneRedwine.com. I spell Simone with a Y. You can also reach me by calling 855 4 Simone with a Y. Or um, there's, of course, there's Instagram, attorney Simone Redwine. And last and most important, my YouTube channel. Please head over, subscribe. It's called Girl, Is That Legal? Um, we break down legal cases each night, um, weeknights. I'm going to be on with uh, host Al Reynolds, as well as an, uh, Brian Ross and additional attorneys, where we're going to break down what's going on in the news. Also, you can catch me on DD in the morning and K104, which you can listen to live online, where I also give some legal breakdowns. So thanks so much. Definitely, I need to get my subscribers up. My goal is to try and get to 15,000. I'm at like 11,000. Um, to get to fifteen thousand in the next few months. I mean, so let's, let's, thanks let's, for the fun. Well, let's let's take a look at this real quick. Thank you know, let's you. let's take a look at your YouTube channel really quick. Okay, okay. she is just a few a few hundred shy, a few hundred shy of uh, getting to. Well, let me pull this up. Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. So why don't Thank you guys you. go over? This is what it looks like. Okay, go over. Hit that subscribe button. It's free, baby. Okay, to hit yes. that subscribe button, it's free. Okay, it's free. Oh, so go. And let me tell you, secondly, what I also I do, I do background checks. I gift free background checks. You can actually check out my playlist, which is called, I think it says either background checks or on the record. How it works is this. I have episodes where I gift someone a background check into the person of their choice live. So they write in, they say, hey, I think my man's cheating on me. Right. I think my baby daddy might be hiding kids, whatever. I do the background check. I give them the results. And baby, what we find is incredible. And if you would like a free background check, you can fill out the form on my channel. And you might be gifted with one of the free background checks on an upcoming episode. Yeah. And also, I mean, you know, we all know about this. Who the F did I marry? 
saga that went on TikTok. That's a whole other conversation in itself, okay? Maybe. But real talk, I understand the concern and the wonderment of wanting to know who you about to marry, okay? So, uh, yeah, go check it out. Yeah. If that's up your alley. Absolutely. Everybody who knows, if you followed me for a while, you know I was engaged for a year. I called off my wedding last summer because I found out who TF I was going to marry was a scammer, a little scammer scammer who uh, uh, stole the wedding money. Wow. Uh, less than three months before the wedding, I went to go try to pay the down payment um, after we invited everyone. And we only had $15.37. So yeah, there's that. Um, definitely lots of fun content. And um, I hope to see you guys on my channel soon. Thanks so wow. much for having me. Of course, uh, Simone, I appreciate you being on. We will be having you back on for sure because, of course, this is not the only case and other, you know, the only topic that we uh, we talk about, and of course, you talk about as well. So we'd love to have you back on very, very soon to talk about these other Thank crazy you. things that are going on. And yeah, Diddy's in trouble, y'all. Diddy's in very big trouble, and uh, he made that bed, so let him lie in it, right? Absolutely, bed he bugs and all. Bed bugs and all. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on. We'll Thank talk to you, you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, big shout out to Miss Simone Redwine. Okay. Really, really big shout out. I do appreciate her coming on and uh being a part of the conversation, dropping serious knowledge bombs in the conversation. Just a quick horn for her. I appreciate her being on real talk. It was uh really amazing. And uh, never a dull moment, as you guys can see. But please go over to her channel. Give her some love. Subscribe. Do all that stuff, all right? That would really, really mean the world, not only just to myself, but to her as well, okay? She's been building her platform uh, and on her Instagram as well. So uh, show some love if you can. Now, we got a couple things that we still got to do, okay? There's still some other things that we need to talk about, some other topics. Uh, not topics, I'm sorry. Same topic. But there's some videos, clips, et cetera, that we still need to take a look at that happened overnight that I wanted to share with you guys. Because still, I'm kind of curious as well. You know, who, uh, where, I'm sorry, where is Diddy? What's going on with this situation? What other pieces of information has dropped? Have other people stepped out and spoken out about Diddy and their experience working for him, et cetera? We got some videos uh, to look at here in just a second i want to show you share with you guys this laura hey what's up hey good to see you uh and thank you so much for the five good morning pascal familia been too long but this p diddy sitch just blindsided uh me yet yet not really yeah yeah it blindsided me too i was very very shocked but then yeah at the same time i'm like i'm shocked but then not really at the same time right i'm, I'm shocked but then no right so big deal, very big deals with this whole situation. Let's keep it a freaking buck. This is a big deal, okay? Um, but I feel that we all were feeling like this was coming, but we just didn't know when. So given the fact that it just happened Monday, Monday afternoon, when all this went, went down, man, I was shook. But at the same time, it was like, oh, my God. Well, yeah, I expected that. I just didn't expect it to happen so damn soon. You know what I mean? So fast. So, so fast. But there is a video that I want to share with you guys really quick. Okay? There is a video. A couple things. One, where is Diddy? Let's take a look at this video. It's from News Nation. And, uh, yeah, I got questiones. Let's take a look. Somebody else who knew something was wrong is former NYPD detective Derek Parker, who's part of the department's intelligence unit that tracked rappers and their links to crime. It's good to see you, detective. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, am I wrong to say that for a very long time, anybody with a brain knew that Puff Daddy wasn't just an upstanding citizen who sung good music and made a lot of money? Well, back then, uh, when I investigated Puffy and some of the incidents he was involved with, he was involved in certain things, but it was nothing like this. This is something that's been coming out. You ever course. hear rumors? There were, there were always like uh, uh, talk of things at his parties and some of the things that he did, but I never saw that with him. All right. I watched an interview with you earlier, um, and you said that there were some very powerful lawyers um, that Puff Daddy had to, to protect him from the investigations you were launching. 
Was there also some very powerful celebrities, very powerful influencers yeah, in New York to, as to well that were trying to protect him? He was he was sort of too too good to too good to take down. Well, no, not at that time. You know, Puffy had problems because he had a, the shooting at Club New York with uh, J Lo, and J Lo was with him. And then uh, he had the uh, shooting. He had the assault at uh, MTV Studios with sure. uh, Steve Stout, and he refused to press charges, so we couldn't really go forward with that case back then. Mm. But you know, Puffy and I got to know one another because every time he got into trouble, I had to go to uh, to see what was going on or to arrest him or to assist in arresting him. All right, you, you say that you had to assist in arresting him on and on and on. Uh, claims from some of the lawsuits. Um, ordered sex workers and prostitutes, order and distributed exiting cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, mushrooms. That's uh, documents from uh, Rodney, Little Rod Jones, um, mm. against uh, one and somebody who was involved uh, along with Puff, Puff Daddy. Um, that he had an assistant, uh, did he chief of staff in a sex trafficking probe, court documents in a lawsuit, compare her to Ghislaine Maxwell. Hold on, real quick. The fact that they dropped Ghislaine in in the in that conversation is pretty crazy, and that they're comparing her to that is pretty crazy. But one thing I'm wondering about is also Christina. Now we just heard about Ethiopia, all right? How she basically signed an affidavit to get herself off of the defendant list uh, for Little Rod's documents or Little Rod's lawsuit, and that's pretty crazy. And I'm wondering the likes of people the likes of Christina and et cetera, I'm wondering if they are actually going to step forward. I'm wondering if they're actually going to come over and sign papers so they can get the hell out of, off of those, off of those uh, lawsuits. The other thing though, too, is remember, just like Simone said, just because you get your name off of this lawsuit doesn't mean that they can't come after you criminally. Okay. And if this assistant, because this is his assistant, Christina is, if she has anything to do with bringing in people, et cetera, having any involvement in this, she can get hit so hard criminally. I mean, she's still going to get hit hard criminally if they find some smoking gun evidence to take her down. It's bad. And it's not only just her. It's the other people, right? It's the other people that were listed on Little Rod's uh, uh, lawsuit and then some. It's crazy. And what's wild is... Lil Rod's lawsuit is the one that exposed, ripped the Band-Aid off of so many, exposed so many people. If you really think about it, it was Lil Rod's lawsuit that exposed and dropped names, more names than Cassie's long, scathing, heartbreaking, and shocking lawsuit that we talked about a few months past. That's crazy, right? He's ripping the lid off of all this ish. That's insane. Let's continue. Maxwell, uh, describe for us Puff Daddy's world and how he sort of expanded that world from just rap culture to white parties in the Hamptons that became the place to be for the New York Jet Set crowd. Well, back then when Puffy, uh, well, when I retired and stuff, Puffy had his brand. His brand was Bad Boy Records. And also he did a lot with, uh, you know, radio and TV. And he did a lot of parties in the Hamptons and the city. He had some really good parties. Listen, he, you know, he ran his parties where people, if you didn't show up dressed, you wouldn't get in. So mm. he never had those kind of problems. However, like I said, some of the events that he did brought out a lot of celebrities and a lot of people, but it also brought out a lot of police too, because we had to watch and see who was coming and to make sure that there was no violence or no problems at some of these events that he threw. I, I, I hear you there. I, what I can't get over is how, uh, and you know this better than anybody from law enforcement, right? Um, you never get caught cheating on your wife the first time. You never get caught drunk driving the first time, right? Right. Um, if, if these allegations are true, they go back a long time. You listen to what Usher said. You listen to what Justin Bieber said. How are we to believe that none of these celebrities, that the law enforcement, that nobody had any idea of, if true, this really horrific behavior? Well, if these allegations were true back then, a lot of people weren't going to come forward and talk. See, in, 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 with the police department, we need cooperation. If you don't have cooperation or people to come forward and make complaints, then you don't really have a case. There's not really far you can go. How you long do you think he ends up in handcuffs? I'm sorry? You think, how long do you think he ends up in handcuffs? How long did he end up in handcuffs? No, yeah, how long till it happens, do you think? Um, it's, oh, that's going to be probably soon. I would say 
the way the case is going right now, yes. I think they're going to have wow. an indictment soon. I'm thinking that it's going to be happening very, very soon as well. I mean, I'm curious when it's going to be, how soon it will be, but it could be as soon as this month, this coming month. Really? I mean, let's be real. They went into his place and they came out with items. They didn't walk in there and walk out empty handed. Now, I want to I want to say this, though. I want to add this, though. Just because they walked out with laptops and computers and he he handed a, he handed over several cell phones does not mean that they're going to be able to find something on his digital devices. But then again, maybe they could. So it's still 50-50. Just because they walked out with items, boxes of things, doesn't mean that there's anything incriminating in those boxes. Just remember that, guys. They went and grabbed, I'm sure, every single digital device that could hold images or videos as best as they could throughout the entire house. I'm sure hard drives, thumb drives, et cetera, okay? But at the same time, we have to stay and err on the side of, hey, they, there may be incriminating information on these, on these devices, and there could be there may not be incriminating as well. We still got to sit on that fence, unfortunately, until the police walk in and give drop the knowledge for us and say, yeah, we he had X amount of images, X amount of videos. Remember the Madeline Soto case? Remember pig vomit? Remember that mother lover? Okay? Over 400 images of videos and, and, and pictures depicting unthinkable things with littles remember all that yeah they went through a phone and it was just one phone so the possibilities okay the possibilities are still very high that they could find content incriminating content but at the same time you never know you never ever know so we're gonna let them do their search let them you know do what they need to do their due diligence to get this whole thing figured out but on some real stuff man man oh man it's going to be a wild one and i do think that they're going to find something i do feel that and these charges could be coming very soon we could be seeing him do his own perp walk very very soon that is if they're able to find him if he's still on america soil because he could be he could be whining and dining with russell simmons right now we don't know because that's, that's still the burning question. Where did Diddy go? Where is he? Sure, his plane went to Antigua. He wasn't on that plane, so where is he? Was he grounded? Is he stuck in America right now? Or did he find another way out of this country? We're going to have to find out here in a second. I got another video. This is a, a, a TV journalist, uh, you know, commentator, et cetera, talking about his cousin doing an internship with Diddy. And I wanted to share this video with you because I just found it to be really crazy and very telling. Let's take a look at this video. You know, I was personally disturbed many years ago. OK, I, I, I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? He wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. What? And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, you know. All right. This is some wild information, okay? The fact that a known commentator journalist that's on tv hooked 
his cousin up or his family, a family member up with Diddy as an internship, working as an intern for Diddy. And Diddy actually turned to this individual and said, you stay the night with me and you can continue on with this job. But if you don't, you lose the job kind of thing. This, of course, was turned down by the cousin or the relative. And it was told to him, to this TV journalist. And I'm wondering why wasn't there anything done about it later? During that time, I'm not saying, I don't know how long ago this was. I don't know how many years this was and all that stuff. But at the same time, that is wild. That this guy... If this is these allegations are true, turn this turn Diddy down, but didn't even say anything about it. Didn't go and file charges, didn't try to sue him, no nothing. And now we're just finding out about this story now. That's crazy. But it also goes to show to you how powerful Diddy really was or Diddy really is. You got to remember, I'm sure that this journalist's cousin or relative is not the only person that had to deal with those types of propositions to advance into in their career. I'm sure that relative is not the only person that has turned down Diddy's advances. But think about the amount of people that actually said okay and did it anyway. That's pretty wild if you really think about it. Remember in Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy was turning to him and saying, hey, I'm going to get you, I'm going to help you win. I'm going to make you win producer. I'm going to get you a, a, a Grammy for producing this album. I'm going to do this, this, and this. Now, of course... People say a lot of things to inspire, to get people to work harder, so on and so forth, okay? But it also does make you wonder, how much control does he have in the industry? Remember, this guy allegedly has countless videos of all types of movers and shakers, politicians all the way down to movie stars doing unthinkable, unthinkable things. That apparently he has blackmail footage of big names, people that we look up to. Just sitting on computers, I'm sure. Maybe those computers that uh, the feds have in their possession right now. But he has all that information in all that footage so that he has power and is just his. So he can pull the strings and have control over these artists and these politicians as well. It's pretty crazy, guys. It's pretty crazy. But I also wonder why there wasn't anything said about this. Why didn't the relative, char uh, you know, sue or anything? Or was this cousin or this relative given a whole bunch of hush money? Like I said, I'm still wondering because at the same time, that's some crazy stuff. That's absolutely crazy stuff. Man. We got more. Let's take a look at this. Oh, man. You got some visitors, dog. Okay, so I'm going to have to go in and out of this one because it's E.T., you know what I mean? Uh, but let's take a look a little. We're going to only take a look at a little bit of this, okay? So we're seeing that large presence. New video, Diddy slowly pacing outside Miami's private jet facility at 3 p.m. yesterday. There he is, by the way, right there. This is the day that his mule, okay, white boy Rick, got arrested while they were trying to get on a plane. Now, one thing that we just learned from our good friend, Simone Redwine, is that he was given a heads up that they were about to go and raid his homes. He knew. He knew. Because prior to those raids, he had to give away 
several cell phones, which we just found out, at least myself, and I'm sure some of you guys in the family in the family chat are learning about right now. That's huge, guys. Several cell phones he had to hand over to 5-0. That's big. But he also knew this is huge. It's really important to know. We, uh, he also knew that the raid was coming. He may not know what day that raid was going to happen, but he knew it was coming. And the same day that that raid is happening, he leaves his kids behind and tries to get onto a plane to fly out to Antigua with one of his mules. That's crazy, guys. But no, he doesn't get on that plane. He's sitting here pacing back and forth with one of his cell phones, maybe a brand new phone that he just bought, pacing back and forth, looking down and out. Pretty bad stuff, guys. But let's continue here. That's crazy. Via TMZ as Homeland Security raided mansions on both coasts, from his $35 million waterfront estate in Florida to Beverly Hills. Let me scoot up a little bit. Enforcement had enough to get the search warrant. They maybe even have enough to get an indictment. And if so, I expect Diddy to be arrested in a matter of days. Days, this lawyer says. In a matter of days, y'all. No more than weeks. This afternoon, Diddy's attorney called Have the raid mercy. a gross overuse of military level force. And we already know about all this BS, okay? We already know about, hey, you know, it's a gross overuse of military level force. Man, you have a person that's been accused of doing some very, very bad things, moving people back and forth across state lines, etc., to other islands and all that as well, okay? Just shish, shish. And I get it. His lawyers are going to sing for their supper, all right? They get paid multiple millions millions of dollars, I'm sure, just to hold it down for Diddy. So they're going to sing for their supper. They're going to do their mother-loving job. They're going to esquire when they need to esquire. You feel me? But at the end of the day, shush. We don't need to hear any of this, eh? this, this mess. And part of a witch hunt, adding that his client is innocent and was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Okay, he hasn't been detained yet. He hasn't been detained yet, but it's coming. How y'all doing? Seems like Diddy was completely caught off guard. Check out his demeanor just six days ago, beaming while out with his son Quincy in West Hollywood. Now, I will say this, okay? Just because six days ago, he's got a big old smile on his face and he's going, uh-uh, uh-uh and doing the diddy bop and everything and he's going yeah yeah you know you know who it is you know what time it is hey you know doesn't mean that he didn't find out a day after the very next day the very next morning he gets a phone call going like yes we need your stuff we need your cell phones and we are about to do a raid for you on you just so you know so if you we do come in hot which we will sir don't be coming out here blasting us to kingdom come but we need those cell phones, sir. Thank you. Sure. One. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Sure. Nah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But at the end of the day, just because he's all smiles one day does not mean he's not getting a phone call the very next day. Things move fast out here, me darlings. Things move fast. Do you understand? Okay. So, sure. But, you know, they got to add the dramatics. He seems fine walking out of this thing. and da, 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 da. Sure. But at the same time, at the end of the mother-loving day, this guy could have gotten a phone call the very next morning and then had to hand that ish over. He could have gotten that phone call right there. But, of course, he's got to show face. He could have had the phone call that day. But he's not going to sit there all down and out and be like, man, he's not going to do that. Let's keep it a buck. We're not dumb. He's got a brand. And he's got to show that he's innocent. So, of course, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Like I said, he should be listening to, to Biggie, Okay. If that's the case, because I know somebody out here is going, yeah, 
Federal agents mad because I'm flagrant. Tap my cell and my phone in my basement. You know, for a fact, somebody's going, leave Diddy alone. You know what I mean? Like that leave Britney alone meme that we all have seen, I'm sure, at some point in our lives. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's continue. So where's the rapper now? Yes. Well, all eyes have been focused on tracking his private jet, which left L.A. around 9 a.m. yesterday, bound for Antigua and Barbuda. But he's not on the dumb plane, okay? He's not on the dumb plane. Just so you know, he's not on there. The United States has an extradition treaty with Antigua and Barbuda, which means that Diddy can be arrested there and brought back to the United States. Okay, so that's another piece of information that's really important there, too. Let's not forget, the place that he was going to was not a place where he couldn't get extradited from. Like, you know, you notice uh, Russell Simmons gone. He's in a place where he can't get extradited from, if I'm correct. Because that's what guilty people do. Yeah, I said it. I don't care. Now, Diddy was going to Antigua. Why? We don't know. It could have been him just going there because he doesn't want to be involved with that. He doesn't want his face on camera. He doesn't want to be seen in cuffs. That could be it too. But... Him flying to Antigua was not him trying to get somewhere where, you know, trying to uh, avoid extradition. But him trying to kick rocks is a big deal to me. That is a very, very big deal. It seems weird. And then you leave your kids behind to deal with the mess that you allegedly may have started and continue and let your kids continue that that legacy of disgusting behavior maybe but you didn't take your kids with you you packed up your ish you took you took your mule with you because the chemicals and the party favors are more important than your own legacy than your own seed at least that's how i'm interpreting it That's disgusting. That's sad and disturbing. Lil Patty just said Antiqua was a layover. Hmm. You know, that's a good theory. That is a good theory. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. You just see what I'm saying? He could have been. He could have been trying to hop on that plane to go to Bali. And do yoga, sun salutations with, with Russell Simmons. You know, thank you all for coming. God bless you. Good night. If you don't know that reference, is from Deaf Comedy Jam. Just so you know, okay. But interesting, right? Very interesting stuff. I'm wondering where he was trying to go to. And the other question is, where is Diddy right now? Is he still in America? I'm assuming he still is. You think the feds aren't going to sit there and try to stop him if he was trying to leave the country? Are you serious? They want to bag and tag this mother lover. You really think they're going to be like, oh, you need to go while we're raiding your place? And you're about to leave the cup. Go ahead, sir. We'll find you. It's all right. No, they're going to be like, no, you sit your ass down. You ain't going nowhere, son. You can try, but you can't. No, no, no. We're not going to spend all that taxpayer money to go out to wherever you're trying to run off to, to arrest your ass or have to deal with all this extradition paperwork or extradition headache just to get you back into America. Forget all that. Forget all of that mess. You stay right here so that we pull up when we have the, the charges for you. We can pull up, get you detained, and get your ass behind bars. That's what I think. I know people still think that he may have left the country. I don't think he did. I think he is being watched over very closely right now. And like I said, <laughs> 
I'm here for it. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I got a super chat. Miss Galore, thank you so much for the five. In Diddy's case, it's more about power rather than S preference. Deep. Pun not intended. But I see what you're saying. Okay? No one man should have all that power. Yeah. It's crazy. I just heard that song last night. Uh, Yesterday, I'm like, man, this song is so damn good. But yes, this is him exacting his power. I'm sure these freak-offs, et cetera, have grown and have augmented over time. Oh, I can get away with it? Q, I'm going to keep doing it. And then it gets more and more intense, more and more elaborate, crazier and crazier. The more money he makes, the more elaborate it gets. The more he gets away with it, the more victims are being added into these parties. The more untouchable he feels, the higher, the high that he gets from it as well, gets more intense. And there's a need to intensify those freak-offs so that he can continue feeling that high, if you get what I'm saying. Because over time, same old thing. Two people in the room gets kind of boring after some time. So I need like at least four. Then four turns into six. Six turns into eight. Eight turns into 12. I don't know why I just went up to 12 real fast. But you know what I'm saying. It gets more and more intense to the point where it's freaking Caligula in in the damn living room. While Jeopardy's playing on the big screen in the background. And he's just sitting there watching the whole damn thing. This is when you have the candles lit. You have the white nail polish. You have all this extra stuff. Like I said, it starts from something small and then grows into something extremely elaborate as time goes on. That's crazy, guys. And it's like, oh, okay, instead of the girls, you know, let me let me just bring a whole bunch of dudes. You know? Now, okay, okay. I know everybody's just been showing up when we just, you know, we just been. But actually, now we're going to do it like this. Now, now you're going to do it. You're going to do this, but with masks on. Huh? That's how creative I am. Okay, now. You did all this, right? You got the masks on and you're doing this. Now we're going to light candles, y'all. We're going to light candles in the background. What? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, you see what I'm saying? And then it just goes more. We're going to bring in cameras. I'm I'm about to go Martin Scorsese on this ad. You see what I'm saying? That's exactly what we're seeing right now. And that's crazy. Crazy. And gamer lover, you ain't wrong. It's crazy what people will do for money. But it's crazy what people will do when they have a lot of power and an incredible amount of privilege. And they know it. And it's crazy what people will do when they get away with it More than just a few times. It's pretty crazy. Actually, Pirate's Booty just asked this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, you know. Okay, let me explain this. The white nail polish. Let's just break it all the way down. It goes a long time ago when Cassie put together her lawsuit in the paperwork, she says something about white nail polish. She had to wear whenever. There were freak-offs with a bunch of men. Because apparently, Ditty loved to see Cassie's hands wrapped around a man's whatnot with white nail polish on her fingernails. Yes, that is the reason why. We are talking about white nail polish. Just 
so you know. Pirate's booty. Just so you know. And for everybody else out here that are watching the show, don't even know anything about white nail polish, now you know. Now you are up to date. Are you happy now? Cheerio. Ha ha. Appreciate you. Anyway, just so you guys know what that's all about. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Never a dull moment on this show, guys. I know some people are dead now. So I just unalived the whole bunch of people. Alante to send them dead. Yep. You're welcome. You know, sometimes. <laughs> Ah, white nail polish. It's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. It's tragic. The situation is tragic. But the white, white nail polish thing just, just sent me. Like it did. So, there it is, guys. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, guys, that's the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. I shall be on tonight. Okay, just to give you guys a fair heads up, a fair warning. Okay, <clears throat> I will be on tonight. It'll be around seven, eight o'clock ish. Just so you guys know, we will be talking, uh, covering the Sebastian Rogers case. We definitely need to do some updates on that. And there's a very solid reason why we are doing an update on that case so be sure to be on the lookout for that sebastian rogers we will be talking about that in a little bit tonight we will be covering that tonight 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 okay we will be talking about that tonight all right there's a reason why i'll explain later all right so please be sure to tune in tonight we do need to bring up that conversation there's a lot of drama that's been circulating around that mother loving thing that this mother loving case and it's been really really bad there's been new interviews etc by the proud foots and all that we need to talk about all of this this stuff so that we are fully up to date okay don't worry i will be covering other cases very very soon but we need to talk about sebastian Okay. Also, for those of y'all who watched me on TikTok, we, I did a late TikTok live last night. I may be doing that again tonight again after tonight's show. Please join me over there on TikTok on my lives. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. We got a lot to talk about. Okay. One second, guys. I'm sorry. Hold on. Maybe this is something. Hold on. Wait, what? Hold on one second, guys. Hold on. Just to make sure. Let me make sure something. Because I may have something breaking. I don't know if it's... And it has to do with Diddy. So hold on one second, guys. But still, as I'm wrapping up... Okay. As I'm wrapping up, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below, please, and thank you. That would really, really mean a lot. Okay, you know your boy's working hard out here to give you the stories and the conversations that you need for the day. So please do me a favor. I guess it's nothing. I, I guess it was a false alarm. Sorry, guys. But please hit that like button down below. Don't forget to hit that reaction button if you're watching on any of the other platforms. Please be sure to crush that follow button on all my platforms. Hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel, please, and thank you. Do not forget, if you want to support the channel, hit that join button down below. Become a member. Hit that Patreon. Check it out. Patreon.com forward slash The Pascal Show. I also have Pascal merch, my store. Go check it out. Consume some stuff. Get something that can wrap all over your body and make you feel good. That's made by these two hands. Please go check it out. Custom made hoodies t-shirts and the like go check that stuff out anyway guys it is time to get go going guys i appreciate all y'all for being here stay blessed i will see you guys tonight for sure so be on the lookout we got the nancy grace interview there's all these other things that we got to talk about we got a big super super show tonight revolving around Ro sebastian rogers case so be on the lookout for it okay anyway guys 
I love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tonight. Stay blessed. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys in the next show. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.